Loving v. Virginia, a turning point in marriage rights. Almighty God created the races white, black, yellow, malay, and red, and he placed them on separate continents. And but for the interference with his arrangement, there would be no cause for such marriages. The fact that he separated the races shows that he did not intend for the races to mix. This was Judge Leon M. Bazile in reaction to Mildred and Richard Loving's first case in the Caroline County Court, which took place in 1958. In the 1960s, Richard and Mildred Loving fought against Virginia's anti-miscegenation law, which said that African Americans and white people could not be married. Loving v. Virginia was a turning point in marriage rights because it deemed states' laws against interracial marriage unconstitutional and forced removal of Virginia's Racial Integrity Act of 1924. Although in the United States it became illegal to have a law against interracial marriage, states cut their laws but were unable to enforce them. In 1865, slaves in the United States were freed by the 13th Amendment. Although African Americans were free, they were not seen as equal to whites. African Americans could not vote, own land, attend school with white people, or enjoy many other rights and privileges that white people had. Another discrimination they faced was not being able to marry outside their race due to segregation. Laws against interracial marriage were called anti-miscegenation laws. Miscegenation is the interbreeding of people considered to be of different racial types. During the 1950s and 60s, the Civil Rights Movement fought for equal rights of African Americans in the United States. The Lovings never intended to be part of the movement. I wasn't involved with the Civil Rights Movement. Only thing I know is what everybody saw in the news. I wasn't in anything concerning civil rights. We were trying to get back to Virginia. That was our goal, to get back home. Mildred Loving the law preventing the Lovings from being legally married in Virginia was called the Racial Integrity Act of 1924. It stated that whites and African Americans could not intermarry. In addition to prohibiting interracial marriage, many people thought this act defined who would be considered white and who would be considered black. The act stated that in order to be considered white by the law, you could not have any other race in your blood. This was also known as the One Drop Rule. The one-drop rule is a historical term in the United States for social classification of anyone with a black ancestor. The people accused of this crime of interracial marriage were Milda Jeter. She was of African and Native American descent, and Richard Loving, a white man. The two became married and became Mr. and Mrs. Loving on June 2, 1958, in Washington, D.C., because interracial marriage was legal there. Shortly after they arrived back home in Virginia, the sheriff and police were already aware of the Loving's marriage and was getting a warrant for their arrest, ready immediately after they came back to Caroline County because interracial marriage was illegal in Virginia. On July 11th of 1958, the police had entered the Loving's home in the middle of the night, arrested them, and brought them to the Caroline County Jail. Mildred was sentenced to stay five days, and Richard was only sentenced one. On January 6th, 1959, the Lovings pled guilty and were given an ultimatum by the court. They could either spend five years in jail or move out of Virginia. The Lovings chose to leave Virginia and move to Washington, D.C. Although they didn't like living in the city, they stayed there for seven years because they wanted to live somewhere where their marriage was legal. Because of the Great Migration, the city was filled with a diverse group of people, but the Lovings were more comfortable in a small town and eventually became fed up with urban life when one of their children got hit by a car on the busy city streets. This was a training point for Mildred, and she chose to take action. Mildred contacted Senator Robert Kennedy, a noted civil rights activist, who replied with a letter pointing them in the direction of the American Civil Liberties Union. The ACLU defends the rights of people who are being discriminated on for their race, for their sexual orientation, or their thoughts. The ACLU gave the Lovings two lawyers, Bernard S. Cohen and Philip J. Hershkoff to help them form a case. The Lovings just wanted the lawyers to go back to Virginia and reason with the judge in order to have residence there. The lawyers did not think that the Caroline County judge would retrial this case and that they would eventually have to go all the way to the United States Supreme Court. The American Civil Liberties Union filed a motion on behalf of the Lovings in the state trial court case to take back the charges and set aside the sentence on the grounds that violated statutes that were against the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment says that all people should receive equal protection of the law. They argued that Virginia's anti-miscegenation law was against the 14th Amendment 
because the lovings weren't receiving the protections that others were receiving. This set in motion a series of lawsuits which ultimately reached the Supreme Court. Richard Loving was hesitant about going to the Supreme Court, for all he wanted to do was be married to his wife in the state of Virginia. The Lovings finally agreed with the lawyers that their best approach would be to bring the case to the United States Supreme Court in order to make their marriage equal. The Lovings never physically went to the Supreme Court because they did not want the attention that would come with going. Their lawyers Bernardus Cohen and Philip J. Hirschkopf represented them. Richard only had one request. Mr. Cohen, tell the court I love my wife and it's just unfair that I cannot live with her in Virginia. Richard Loving. Virginia's Racial Integrity Act of 1924 violated the Equal Protection and Due Process Clauses of the 14th Amendment because it discriminated against people solely on the basis of racial classification. On 12, 1967, in a unanimous ruling by the U.S. Supreme Court, Virginia's Racial Integrity Act of 1924 was deemed unconstitutional. This was a turning point because after their case, 41 states reappealed their laws banning interracial marriage. The leading judge, Mr. Chief Justice Warren, said, Marriage is one of the basic civil rights of a man, fundamental to our very existence and survival. To deny this fundamental freedom on so unsupportable a basis as the racial classifications embodied in these statutes, classification so directly subverse of this principle of equality at the heart of the 14th Amendment, is surely to deprive all the state citizens of liberty without due process of law. The 14th Amendment requires that the freedom of a choice to marry not be restricted by individuous racial discrimination. Under our Constitution, the freedom to marry or not marry, a person of another race resides with the individual and cannot be infringed by the state. The Lovings and their family moved back to Virginia and stayed there to raise their family. Although interracial couples were now allowed to be married and the Civil Rights Act was passed in 1964, they continued to receive discrimination from society. Some states kept their laws banning interracial marriage, but could not enforce them. The fight for interracial marriage highlighted the discrimination faced by certain kinds of marriage, specifically those that are participated in by oppressed people. At the time of the case, only 20% of people in the U.S. approved of interracial marriage. But after the case, there was a continuous increase in the support for interracial marriage. When the last anti-miscegenation law was removed in 2000, 65% of people approved of interracial marriage. By 2011, 86% people showed approval. Today, people in the U.S. are fighting for same-sex marriage. Loving v. Virginia gives hope to those fighting for further marriage equality. At one point, interracial marriage was illegal, and now it is not. Right now, same-sex marriage is illegal. Equal rights advocates hope that same-sex marriage will follow in the footsteps of Loving v. Virginia. Before she died in 2008, Mildred Loving advocated for continued marriage equality and was proud that her case could serve as a precedent for in the future. When my late husband Richard and I got married in Washington, D.C. in 1958, it wasn't to make a political statement or start a fight. We were in love and we wanted to be married. Not a day goes by that I don't think of Richard and our love and how much it meant to me to have that freedom to marry the person precious to me even if others thought he was the wrong kind of person for me to marry. I believe all Americans, no matter their race, no matter their sex, no matter their sexual orientation, should have that same freedom to marry. I am proud that Richards and my name are on a court case that can help reinforce the love, the commitment, the fairness in the family that so many people, black or white, young or old, gay or straight, seek in life. I support the freedom to marry for all, that's what Loving and Loving are all about, Mrs. Mildred Loving. In conclusion, the Loving story was a fight for marriage rights as well as civil rights. Although it was not the Loving's intent to become a major turning point for civil rights movement, they helped change the anti-miscegenation laws and in turn allowed interracial marriage to exist in all 50 states. These changes in the laws helped to inspire others to believe in equality for all as the fight for the civil liberties union continues today. Loving v. Virginia, a turning point in marriage rights.